Hello, good evening. I'm Dr. Rohan Krishnan and you're watching Medical Dialogues Presents The Health Perspective. In today's episode of Health Perspective, we are going to discuss uh, one of the hot most topic of this uh, uh, medical field which is going on right now. A new transition has been done by the Central Ministry and the National Medical Commission where there is a scrapping of the NEET postgraduate entrance examination and a combined final year examination for passing for any graduate licensing examination as well as for admission into postgraduate medical courses, a new examination known as NEXT examination, that is the national exit test, is going to be conducted. Right now, there are a lot of uh, clouds uh, regarding who is going to conduct this examination, when it is going to be conducted, and how is it going to be conducted. Mostly the when and the how part is being uh, channelized by the government, but still, there remains a lot of questions and chaos among the need PG aspirants, among the medical students, uh, and also to those who are preparing for their PG entrance examination. Uh, to discuss this topic with us today, I am honored to invite Dr. Mukesh Bhatia, sir, who is the founder and chairman of DBMCI. He is a well-known personality and well-known for his efforts and not only in medical field for education education in India, but also abroad. His uh, <clears throat> uh, collaborations and his uh, contributions uh, for med MRCP examination is also well versed and studied by the students. I welcome Dr. Mukesh Bhatia, sir. Thank you, Dr. Rohan Krishnan, for your kind word of appreciation. And I also thank Medical Dialogue for giving me a chance to talk to the illustrious students who are listening to me. Well, topic is really very confusing, but I'll try to remove the, the darkness, like to throw some light so that you are enriched by a lot of information. So I want my PPT should be shown. Yeah. So the topic is about the proposed next exam as told by Dr. Rohan. Now, let, let me briefly tell you, what is the current journey? That means what is happening now? And in the next slide, I'll tell you what changes have occurred. Right now, you write your neat UG exam. You enter a medical college, spend about four and a half years for studies. Then come the final prof. In the final prof, you write theory and practical. You pass, you get a provisional degree or registration to be more precise. You start your internship and, and after completing one year of internship, you get permanent registration and you get degree and then you write your NEET PG that everybody knows. However, it was my duty to briefly tell you. Now, what is the changes what are going to happen? Well, again, you write NEET UG and you enter the MBBS. That is common. Well, you come to final years. In final year, we were having theory and practical exam. Now, it has been replaced. Now, there will be only theory exam. Only theory exam. It will be MCQ based. MCQ based it will be equivalent to PG entrance. That means this final year exam, which you are writing now, it has been replaced by PG entrance exam. And the name given is next step one. Okay. Well, you pass the exam. And after that, you get a provisional registration and you do internship for one year. What I want you to note, it is the only theory exam, MCQ, just like the PG entrance exam, what you are doing now. There is no practical exam as of now. You do one year of internship, and after that, you go for next two exams, which is a practical exam. Okay, and there is no MCQs or practical exam. If you pass, then you get a permanent degree of MBBS, plus you also get admission into PG. Now, what they have done it, practical is to, I being, being done by internship. What National Medical Council want that you should have enough practical, practical experience before you write your exam. So now let me talk about 
step one pattern, this exam, what I was talking to you, let me talk to you a little bit more detail about what the pattern. There will be a total of 540 MCQs in six papers. Exam will be held over three days with two sessions in a day. Point to be noted in contrast to currently we are having only one day exam. So PG enters the cumulative score of six parts will be counted. All these six uh, parts will be counted. And to pass this examination, minimum 50 percentage or percentile required. But this point has not been cleared by NMC or government so far. Now, same thing. Let me show you a lovely chart. So as I told you, step one exam is a three-day exam. So again, two sessions. One will be pre-lunch and one is post-lunch. In the pre-lunch session, there will be medicine and allied subject, surgery, allied and gynae and obstetrics. In post-lunch, pediatric, ENT, ophthalmology, there will be 120 questions to be done in three hours, 60 questions to be done in one and a half hours. So as I talked to you, total number of questions per day, 120 and 60, that is 180. Three day exam, total question 180 multiplied by 3, 540. So, as I told you in the previous slide, that in this there will be totally 540 questions, six paper. And now you can see how these questions are going to be asked, what subject we are there. Beautiful summary in one slide only. You can have, if you want, you can click also. Anybody want to test it? Let me remove these pens writing so that you have a better picture okay well this is regarding step one exam so it is the theory exam done now let me tell you regarding supplementary examination well supplementary examination shall be held once a year it is restricted to those who candidate who have failed in one or more of the six papers. They are they are required to repeat those particular papers subject only. Point to be noted. Those who do not pass both the next step one and supplementary exam of a particular year, now they will be writing exam in the coming year. Okay. Now, what are the pattern of questions in Next one is problem solving, difficult, 60% question. Comprehension analysis, 20%. Basic sciences, 10%. This is a very important point. That means now they are giving more stress to the problem solving question, comprehension. Basic sciences like anatomy, physio, biochem, they are not given much of the weightage. Even these basic sciences, they, they want that they should be clinically applied, right? So more of a applied sciences is the scenario. PSM around 10% including public health. Forensic medicine will come integrated with all the subjects. Suppose they are asking any toxicity that they will include in medicine, okay? And they are asking anything about injury, they may include in surgery part, or you can say it will be more of a integrated with other subjects. Now we talk about step two. I hope you remember step two was the practical exam. It was done after internship. You're done one year of internship. So it will be practical, clinical, and viva examination covering all seven clinical subject discipline. I'm going to uh, display in the next slide. Examination shall be held in person or live. That means it will be face to face the way you have done uh, your practical exam at the moment. Okay, it will be done face to face. What examiner wants? We they want that you should work hard in the ward during internship because next two shall be based on your practical knowledge, and there is no MCQs at the moment. People are internship; they are all busy in doing solving MCQs. They bunk the wards. They don't see the patient. They are just busy in solving MCQ. Now, government is very clear about it. They want whatever theory part you finish before you enter internship, work hard, go to the ward, see the patient, do the procedures, because whatever you will be doing in internship, they are going to ask in your practical exam. 
okay so that's the reason they want that you should really work hard in internship so as i was talking to you now what the syllabus what are all are to be included in step two exam medicine and allied discipline surgery allied obg pediatric ent ophthalmology orthopedic remember these are the two subjects which are currently being taught in the pre final years these are the subject of final years so now that means remember you are going to have uh, this practical of ent ophthalmology in final year after internship also now new thing which has been added in the syllabus is physical medicine and rehabilitation rehabilitation pmr which was not a subject very important subject in our exam but now especially they have included pmr also so now step 2 evaluation what is they are going to ask actual cases the way you are seeing nowadays also but additional thing new thing are objective structure clinical examination so called oski competency in clinical diagnosis how you are competent in clinical diagnosis this is only possible you if you have really worked in the wards during the internship that's why they want you to have a competent enough to diagnose the clinical scenario patient and clinical decision making and communication skill is very important i think this uh, this thing has never been a very important topic uh, of like, training till now but there are all new thing what they have added now what about supplementary examination a next step to supplementary examination shall be held once a week a uh, once a year sorry my uh, my, uh, my apology it will be restricted to only those candidate who have failed in one or more up to three subject of seven subjects they are required to repeat particularly those subject only where a student have failed let go back look go back look there are seven subjects okay so suppose somebody has failed in this discipline so he has to appear for this exam only not others now proposed timelines which are remember it's a proposed not a definite next one regular will be in the second week of 23 this year only and date of result will be somewhere in the second week of 24 that may after one month then third mbbs final mbbs part 2 practical examination first week of january and fourth week of january will result will be out of course dates may be let change a little bit internship first february to next year okay next step 2 will be second week of march like they are all proposed timings they are not final yet but just to inform you what are the exam patterns to summarize what i told you next will be held in two parts next one and two the candidate has to pass both step 1 and step 2 and exam and examination within 10 year of joining mbbs course that means they have put a ceiling of 10 year not that person has joined mbbs in 2020 and he has not passed up to 2030 also 10 year is the upper limit by which we has to pass one and two there is no bypass to next next one score is going to be count, counted as pg enter score most dangerous googly next one score shall remain with you for 3 years if you want to reattempt next one to improve the score you can do after clearing next two now suppose suppose in next one this time you get 100 marks and you write again and in the next exam you get 200 marks so total will be 300 but your score will be divided by 2 it will be 150 suppose you attempted one time you get 100 you write 200 other time you you get 300 so there are three attempts you total is 600 and now you divide by 3 three. three attempts to to every 200 although you are getting 300 marks in the final attempt but average will be 200 because your 
uh, that means despite having 300, your average because you are divided by number of attempts. This point should be very clear. But what about a scenario? First attempt, you get 100. Second attempt, you get 50. Oh, so now average will be how much? Average will be 150 divided by 2. Average will be 75. It is less than what you got last time. So this point should be very, very clear about it. Okay. So I hope you are clear about it, average. Well, one more point. Suppose those who want to write for an exam, MRCP, USMLE plan, even after clearing next one and internship next two, it, this you can write after doing next two. It's a compulsory. That means the next, next one and two are compulsory before you write any of the any of the uh, foreign exam. Well, if you have any query, <coughs> you can very well contact me. This is my personal email ID, dr.bhatia at dbmi.edu dot in or you can very well uh, you know, contact medical dialogue which is the prestigious most medical newspaper and the medical dialogue people are, are doing a great service to medical uh, fraternity by spreading uh, all the good news giving you information knowledge okay so they deserve a big round of applause and of course dr rohan krishnan a stalwart in himself, a postgraduate uh, and, and a faculty of orthopedic in great Molana Azad Medical College. He's a great leader and he's the, uh, these two people, Medical Dialogue and the Rohan Krishnan are the people who have organized this show. I thank Rohan Krishnan and Medical Dialogue for arranging this session. Thank you very much. Any queries, you can very well ask. Yes, doctor. Over to Dr. Rohan. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think that you have put each and everything uh, in a very crystal clear format about how this next examination is going to happen. Even myself has learned so many new things after this show, though I try to remain very uh, keen and active and, and have all the new upcoming news, but I was not uh, knowing about how the subjects are going to get divided and which paper will become. So many new information has come with this. I think that our viewers will be more than happy uh, to see this. And uh, if they have any query, they can contact you or they can contact Medical Dialogues or can anytime visit any of the DBMCI office where their queries, I think, will definitely will be sorted. Thank you so much once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.